party night in a college town. There's just so many people around and out at all hours. There was always something going on. At Kilroy's Bar in Bloomington, Indiana, students from Indiana University pack the place and then head home in the early morning hours. When you feel very close-knit there, there was never like a question of me being unsafe. Yet it was shortly after leaving Kilroy's, five years ago this month, that 20-year-old Lauren Spear, a sophomore from New York, vanished <sighs> off the streets of Bloomington and has not been seen since. I really just would like to hear this is where you can find your daughter. It's the not knowing what happened to her, where she might be, or, you know, it's, it's unbearable. But tonight, Lauren Spears' parents may be getting closer to knowing what happened. They came from up this direction. For more than a year, 2020 has been tracking a reinvigorated investigation. Surveillance cameras. With the help of former FBI cold case agent Brad Garrett, now an ABC News consultant, retracing her every step. Last seen actually at this intersection. The last time she was seen alive is exactly where we're standing. I really just would like to be able to bring Lauren home. I'm looking at her. Lauren Spear grew up in the New York City suburb of Scarsdale. What are you going to be? I'm going to be a princess. You're going to be a princess. She's a great kid, uh, high energy, very caring. Very caring. Loving. I love you. You love me. She really had a zest for life. <laughs> I love that. I know. That's so Lauren. Her heartbroken mother and father, Charlene and Rob Spear, you make me cry, honey. Try now to smile through their tears as they remember the good times. The child ballerina. She's mom and dad. I just want to say thank you. I'm having an amazing night, and I love you too so much. The coming of age at her bat mitzvah. We're proudest of how she handles herself her boundless potential, and her joy in living life. You are proud parents. Yeah, I'm very proud. So proud. Very proud. The call that ended her parents' dreams for Lauren came on June 3rd, 2011. We were eating dinner, and Robbie, the phone rang. I went to answer the phone, and Robbie said, Char, Lauren's missing. So it's really heart-stopping, you know? Lauren Spear has become a household name. One of the highest profile missing person cases in America. We believe that the chances are very great that there was foul play because otherwise we, we feel Lauren would have made contact by now. My first thing is to say to the person that has Lauren or that has harmed Lauren, shame on you. Shame on you. You're on the search of fire. Search. Search. Right. Hundreds of volunteers you walk up and down the streets, check dumpsters, yeah. check alleyways. Join Lauren's parents. Make sure you pay attention to the creek area while you're down there. Okay. Full of hope she would be found safe and soon. I came out today just to help look for Lauren, and it's just a lot of massive territory. They searched abandoned quarries. And we're continuing the search that we started. Dense forests. So you're in this massive area and you're driving, here's another pull off, let's pull off. And then you get out of the car and then you go walking through these woods and you're calling Lauren's name and you're hoping you're gonna find her laying in the woods somewhere. And uh, it's tough, you know. Um, Let me be firm in that we're here, still committed to finding her. It's our worst nightmare. Kardashian and Seacrest now tweeting for volunteers to join the search. A massive search and a $100,000 reward have turned up little. And then, as a last ditch effort, police searched the landfill used by the city of Bloomington. Probably the hardest thing that, that we had to do in the searches was to go to that landfill. Yeah. Stand there, watch them. The 
the search turned up empty. I start my every day hoping that today is a day. I go to sleep every night knowing that I have failed. And then I haven't. I'm sorry. I haven't done enough. Done but, um. After June 3rd, it really um, started to sink in that this was happening. 11 days and counting since Lauren vanished. The search for Lauren Spear now stretches into a second month. This Sunday marks the one year anniversary of the disappearance of IU student Lauren Spear. Today, the missing person posters are all but gone around the Bloomington campus, and the name Lauren Spear is a thing of the past to many. So, so when I say the name Lauren Spear, it doesn't really ring a bell. Mm -mm. There's not really much talk of it anymore, no. It's the old news. I think we should let it go and get move on. But quietly, behind the scenes, the case is very much alive. We're getting close. I think we're going to solve this. Former FBI agent Garrett and a team of private detectives hired by Lauren's parents have now turned up new witnesses, leads, and theories. Everything leads to this house where Lauren was or is. Garrett started with those closest to Lauren and the young man she was with the night she disappeared. When something happens to someone, it's usually from their own circle. Garrett also focused on reports of a white truck in the area that night the kind of truck driven by this ex-convict. He might be somebody we need to take a look at. Regarding the disappearance of Lauren Spear, do you intend to answer all the questions truthfully? Yes. Also in the mix, a flood of tips about the alleged involvement of current and former members of Indiana biker gangs. Did you shoot her? No, I didn't shoot her. You didn't shoot her? What did you do with her? I don't even know the broad. I told you that. Bye. And then, in the last few months, Garrett received a set of brand new leads from inside a state prison, claiming that some of Lauren's fellow students saw her die and secretly disposed of her body. She OD'd. They got scared and drove her down to the Ohio River and disposed of her body. Three major theories on the board, all being chased. No lead could be ignored, no clue dismissed. So you have to figure out a way to crack that. And that's what I've been trying to do for the last year. All coming down to a fateful few moments. Basically, this mystery is in a block. Somewhere in this block. And just in this short distance from here down to there. Literally, you're only talking maybe 100 yards. 